It's an honor to introduce a scientist and author whose work I have been following since my undergraduate days. I know that I'm not alone in being inspired by his books. The Selfish Gene, for instance, was a lightning bolt of clarity and forceful argument and represents an ideal of good science writing. His many books since have just gotten better. His next book, which will be published later this year, is The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution, which comes out in September. He possesses those virtues of being both eloquent and forthright, never hesitating to say directly what he means. He will probably say things which you may disagree. And of course, he will offer ideas with which you can cheer. And so, without further ado, Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Dr. Richard Dawkins. For me, coming back to America after a year's absence was exhilarating. After the recent November election, the whole world seemed to let out a collective sigh of relief. It was as though a dear friend had returned to the fold of civilization. And the world of science, too, feels a new sense of hope. The ban on stem cell research has been lifted. From what I understand, there will be more funding for science. <laughs> for science and other research that has no connection with homeland defense. <laughs> and once again, the United States can, as you might say in these parts, step up to the plate as leaders in the world of science. But I have also been greeted with stronger reactions against science and reason. Some of my American colleagues have suggested that those theocrats whose sole mission apparently is to destroy the secular dream of the Founding Fathers and replace it with the nightmare of Stone Age morals and mysticism are behaving like cornered and wounded animals. <laughs> Organizations such as the so-called Discovery Institute ill-named, and answers in Genesis, they long ago lost in the halls of science, they've lost again and again in the courts of law, so fear tactics and whinging about being offended is all that they have left. They have hijacked terms such as academic freedom to push their own agenda. They do everything they can to intimidate science teachers and professors in both public schools and universities. Bills have been put to numerous state legislatures in Louisiana, Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Florida, Iowa, Alabama, Mississippi, New Mexico, Michigan, but apparently not in Nebraska. Congratulations. <laughs> the wording of these bills vary, but they all hit the same hot buttons. Academic freedom, teach the controversy, diversity of opinion, views of the people. The Discovery Institute I just mentioned, a very well-financed lobby for creationism, has published no research papers in defense of their position. They shamelessly bypass the peer review process and appeal directly to a public which is unqualified to assess the matter. Unqualified precisely because the very same activists deny them a proper education in science and the scientific method. Teach the controversy? What controversy? Academic freedom? Well, listen to what just happened in Oklahoma. This is a portion of House Resolution 1014 to be introduced into the Oklahoma State Legislature. I think it may be introduced this very day. Be it resolved. Whereas the University of Oklahoma, as part of the Darwin 2009 project, has invited as a public speaker on campus Richard Dawkins, whose published opinion, as represented in his 2006 book, The God Delusion, and in public statements on the theory of evolution, demonstrate 
an intolerance for cultural diversity <laughs> and diversity of thinking. <laughs> diversity of thinking. Presumably, that would include I hope you can read what it says on the blackboard of this intelligent, falling theory of gravity lecture. <laughs> DX over DT equals 1 Corinthians 1 to 10. <laughs> or diversity of thinking. What about the stork theory of human reproduction? I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. If you have questioned sex theory, that's it. Your career is over. I have been told to shut up. As a sex maniac, I'm pretty hostile to the rival stork theory. Just stand up and question sex theory. You'll find out how risky that is. There are people out there who want to keep science in a little box where it can't possibly touch storks. Stork theory. I mean, it's uh, just fantasy, basically. Scientists are not allowed to even think thoughts that involve storks delivering babies. We cannot accept to treat the stork theory as an alternative scientific theory. I'm frightened by this. But I'm not going to let it stop me from investigating and from speaking about it. I'd like to put what I call the ultimate stork theory. It's all very well to say that the stork delivers the baby. But who delivers the stork? <laughs> Some of you may have seen the original uh, film called Expelled, in which that parody is based. Should we invite astrologers to speak to the students studying astronomy, alchemists to speak to chemistry students, flat earthers to speak to geography students in the interests of teaching the controversy? Contrary, to the, uh, contrary and offensive to the views and opinions of most citizens of Oklahoma. What's really offensive is the bizarre idea that a state university should only ever hear opinions that its citizens agree with. If that principle is ever accepted, you can kiss goodbye to everything that a university stands for. What on earth is a university for if it only reinforces opinions that students and the public already hold? And as it happens, evolution is a scientific fact as securely established as anything known in science. What is the purpose of purpose? <laughs>